Shalom, shalom. Greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. What a great opportunity that we have today. Bless the Lord for his goodness and kindness, for his mercy and power, for his presence in our lives. We bless him. We bless him. Um, and we have to conclude, honestly, all of us, those who are who want to take some time and think or consider or acknowledge life the things around us those who don't want to ignore what is real that God is present in our stories and God is moving in our in our lives every day there are things that happen and we take them for granted or we conclude that they just happened <laughs> but it's not true that things don't just happen there is a, a law that is called that is called a law of cause and effect. If there is something at work or in movement, then something else caused it. Nothing that happens, there is nothing that happens just like that. Something caused something else to move, and you know the law of cause and effect has changed the world. You people understand there's, there's going to be a movement in anything. The car, uh, factories, you know, um, um, those uh, people, um, animals, you know, creation in general. There is always something that causes something else to happen. So the law of cause and effect. If you are seeing something moving or present or alive, it's got to have a source. It's got to have a source. So it is then stupidity not to think of the cause that allowed that consequence you see here happening or taking place. Do you understand? It's called the law of cause and effect. We are blessed then to know that our Father, who is the source, has caused and is still causing a lot of things that is happening in our lives. And uh, that if the law of cause and effect is real, we can determine how th the outcome of things. And you know this is the beauty, beautiful thing about life and about the gospel. Imagine to determine the outcome of certain things because you understand the law of cause and effect. And uh, you master it. For instance, the Bible says, if you speak to the mountain and you, you, you don't doubt in your heart and you tell it to be thrown in the sea, if you don't doubt in your heart, you, you shall see it. If you believe that what you said you will come to pass, you, you shall see it. He's saying now it's already the law of cause and effect. That of course you will not find it in the, in the sea without you telling it to go in the sea. You, you see, for instance, now he's revealing your authority, the power of your words. The power of your words, the power of your belief, the power of your convictions. That you can cause certain things to happen. And who is doing that? You are doing it, but you are allowed by God to do it. In other words, you've been given the power, the authority, the ability to do it, to cause that. You see what I mean? The law of cause and effect. Ask, it shall be given to you. Asking is the cause and the effect is receiving. So you understand it's both there. Ask, it shall be given to you. So... When you see that in a good way, you know, understand that the gospel 
or the blessings we have today is an effect of someone's work. That the work of one man caused what we see here on the earth. And that uh, nothing is just happening. We should understand that what caused what we see here, if it's still there, what we see here will continue to be. But if what the, the cause changes, then the effect will change. You understand? Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, we have the word here in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, 27. And uh, we are seeing wisdom. And we are trying to understand what wisdom is and how to flow in it or where it came from and how to activate it or walk in it. Everything about wisdom. And because the wisdom, wisdom is very important in life. We need wisdom. It says, 127 1 Corinthians, it says, But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. Now, this is called chosen the foolish things in the world's estimation. Chosen the ignoble and despised things by the world's reckoning. Re reckoning. What is he saying? He's saying there are things which the world uploads. God does not necessarily upload them. He actually ignores them. He is not moved by what many people think. And uh, he might choose something that you may call foolish or what you don't appreciate, or in your view, it is not right, but will that make it um, not being right because you said so, because that's your view? No. Because you see, what you have, what you see is called your personal opinion. But what God sees is called truth. What you say is your opinion. But what God says is called truth. What's the difference between opinion and truth? Opinion is an individual perception over something. And many times you are so limited in all angles. Right? That's the meaning of opinion. But what is truth? Truth is a universal law that works regardless your your your, your consent or not. Whether you agree with it or not. And it works everywhere in the world and it transcends time and space, that is called truth. Which means truth will never change. If it was true in 2,000 years ago, it will be true in 2,000 years to come. You, you understand truth. But opinions can change. It can be opinion concerning a matter or a situation, but then you will change your opinion after you have seen changes because there are things which will always change. It's called time and change itself. There are for people who change their opinion. How many times have you uh, thought that this thing is this way or you think it is right to see it in a certain way? After a period of time, you change your mind because you have new data, you have new information and you change the way you see things. But you see, truth is not your opinion. Truth is a very defined and uh, accurate view of things from the beginning to the end, from eternities to eternities. That means you might disagree with truth today and you advance your opinion because you have no information or that is what you're seeing at the moment. But with time, you are challenged after receiving more information about something and you change your opinion and you agree with the truth. So just because somebody does not agree with the truth today doesn't mean that they will not agree with the truth tomorrow. And uh, truth does not change, whereas um, uh, opinion, personal opinion will easily change anytime, any minute, anytime, anywhere, anyhow, it can change, you see? So the Bible teaches us also that we should walk and when we walk, we don't see at those things that are seen, 
because they are temporal. But we look at those things which are not seen because they are eternal, you know. So that means that what we call personal opinion is connected to the things we see. And uh, the things we don't see is connected to truth. So you see, there's a huge difference between truth and personal opinion. In this, in this scripture, I want to use another, um, another version to help understand exactly what he's talking about. He says, it appears as though God deliberately selected the world's morons to show up the wise guys and the world's weaklings to show up the high and mighty. In other words, God in his presentation of truth and manifestation of the truth, every so-called wise person was confounded. They were so shocked to see that what they called wisdom and thought, what they thought they knew, what they thought was the best or better, it wasn't. It wasn't. And that's what he's saying here. He's saying, well, God... Um, chose the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. The choices of God are always amazing. And surprisingly, every choice of God is always on point. When you study how he, God chose, uh, Christ Jesus chose his disciples, for example, in your, if you were made the advice, the advisor of Christ, you would say, no, 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 Peter, no, 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 no not Peter. You see? And and when he chose John, he will say, no, 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 please, find one else, someone else. When he chose um, James, or Jacob, he will say, no, 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 please. You see, the choice of God is actually foolishness. The day he called Apostle Paul, the one who turned into Paul, but before he was called Saul. And he arrested him and was choosing Paul. At the moment, if you were to ask all the Christians around if they wanted to see Paul, you know, I mean, if they would choose Paul, my goodness, everybody would say, please kill him and all his family. Because the choices of God are always beyond and it confounds the wise. And I'm telling you, it still happens even right now. That many people are not acquainted with the choices of God. They always define, they always confine, confound the wise. The wise are always astonished at the kind of choices that God is making. But then what is more surprising it's not even the choices, but it's the outcome of the choice. Everybody agrees later that this was the perfect man to be chosen. The wisdom of God is beyond. The wisdom of God is amazing. How many people that we have judged, looking at them, we think they are not the, the ones that God was supposed to choose. Looking at them in the beginning, you think, oh, they will not make it. But look at what they turn to become. The choice of God is always beyond a man's opinion. It is divine and is right, is always on point. Glory to God. The wisdom of God is not the wisdom of men. Shalom, shalom. Mm -hmm.